Hello everyone, this is section 5.2 number 2. We are going to do a lot of examples with the uh, sum and difference formulas for cosines and sines right now. My goal with this video is to do one problem of each flavor that you're going to see on the homework. Uh, you may, of course, when you're doing the homework, run into more complications. If you do, you know, keep trying with the problems, um, use this video, use the examples in the book, or of course, email me with your questions. But I'm going to try to keep things uh, pretty tight just so that we can get through all the different types of problems. Okay, so the first type of problem you might see is a problem like this, uh, where it asks you to evaluate cosine of 5 pi over 18 times cosine of pi over 9 plus sine of 5 pi over 18 plus times sine of pi over 9, and I'm already tired just reading that problem out, and I already, oh, excuse me, I already see a problem here. I have no idea what, I don't even know what a pi over 18 is. I guess I could try to sketch it, and I could, you know, figure it out, and same with a pi over 9, no clue. It's not in my unit circle. And furthermore, there's just so many different terms here. So I don't even know where those angles are. I don't know how to do the cosine of that angle because I don't know what the angle is. Um, it feels stuck. But this is a key point here where I'm going to look for structure. I notice that there's some repetition in the angles. I have 5 pi over 18, 5 pi over 18, and a pi over 9, pi over 9. So I'm going to call 5 pi over 18 my angle alpha. I'm going to call pi over 9 my angle beta. And then what I see is that I really have something of the structure cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta. Hmm. Which of these identities has that structure? So it's cosine cosine with a plus in the middle. So which of them has cosine, cosine with a plus in the middle? Well, it looks like identity number two, cosine of alpha minus beta. So identity number two says that this, I'm just going to draw an arrow, is equivalent to cosine of alpha minus beta. Now I identified what the alpha and beta were, so this is going to be identical to the cosine of 5 pi over 18 minus pi over 9. Now this again feels weird. Uh, I still can't really do anything, except I can actually subtract these angles now. This is like 2 pi over 18, right, if I, if I double the numerator and denominator. So 5 minus 2, this would be the same as cosine of 3 pi over 18. Well, that simplifies to cosine of pi over 6. And finally, we've arrived at something that I know how to evaluate. Cosine of pi over 6 is equal to, from my unit circle, loop, not that, square root of 3 over 2. So this whole messy expression in number 8 evaluates into square root of 3 over 2. Let's do the reverse, and this is a really common situation. So here I have a simple expression, just a single sign, trig value, but I have a bad angle. So I'm going to brainstorm a little bit before I start. All the different ways that I could make 75 with either addition or subtraction. And again, we're moving into degrees here. These can be in radians or degrees. The identities function the same. Um, you know, I, so I could do, of course, 70 plus 5. What I'm looking for, though, is unit circle angles, angles that I know. So if I think about the list of angles I know, I know, you know, 30, 60, 90, 120. I know 45, 90, um, 135 in degrees, um, 150 in degrees. That should go down here, the 120s. So these are kind of what I'm, I want to use to see if I can make 75. I don't want to use 70 plus 5. It would be technically true, but it's just not very useful. Um, and I think I hit this in the last video. I see 30 plus 45 would also make 75. So that seems like a good candidate. Uh, but let me keep searching. It also seems like maybe I could do 120 minus 45 would be another way to get to 75. 
So you can always be creative. You can be as creative as you want to be. Uh, you could do 150 uh, minus 75. Well, so that wouldn't, 150 minus 75 wouldn't work because we don't know 75. But either of these two would work. I'm going to go simplest with 30 plus 45 just because like I'm allowed to choose, right? It's not saying, hey, which of these should I use? Uh, I'm allowed to choose here. So I'm going to rewrite this problem not as sine 75, but as sine of 30 degrees plus 45 degrees. Why would I do such a thing? Well, because I'm now in the form sine of alpha plus beta. So I can look at my list of identities and notice that I looks like I want to use identity 3. So that would be sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta. I actually really like, and I know I have the identity right here in front of me, I really like writing the identity that I'm going to plug into right above the formula where I plug things in. It just helps me keep things straight, keeps things organized. So this is going to be sine 30 cosine 45 plus cosine 30 sine 45. That's a zero degree plus. And then you go consult your unit circle uh, because every single one of these four expressions is something that you know. So, right, we're looking at 45 and we're looking at 30 so sine of 30 is 1 half, cosine of 45 is root 2 over 2, cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, sine 45 is root 2 over 2. If you're not so sure about those values, go practice your unit circle. It's, it's not a problem with this section, it's a problem with chapter 4. So uh, make sure you, you do have your unit circle ready, and you know maybe this is actually doing these problems as really good unit circle practice also. So you, know, you kind of get a little bit from both ends. Let's keep simplifying. Uh, so we multiply across, and this becomes root 2 over 4 plus root 6 over 4. Remember that when you multiply roots, you can multiply the arguments of the roots and uh, bring them together under one root. And then you can write this as root 2 plus root 6 over 4. When you add roots, you cannot add the arguments of the roots. That's not how they work. Roots are like exponents. So your final answer, it doesn't feel like a good final answer because it's just so messy, but this is it. This is equal to sine of 75 degrees. I encourage you, you guys, uh, I won't do it for you, but you can check that on your calculator, and you can check this on your calculator, and you should get the same thing. If you're going to check this on your calculator, make sure you put your numerator in parentheses or you do the fraction bar fancy so you get everything kind of um, in the right place is, is my only thing that people run into. You're going to run into a lot of problems like number 16 here. Uh, sometimes they're in degrees, sometimes they're in radians. You're always going to end up using one of these four identities. I actually think the most challenging part is the algebra part of splitting up the angle in a productive way. I would say just keep trying uh, to split up the angle. You're welcome to like use a, a you know scientific calculator to help you uh, do some addition or subtraction um, to split up these angles. Um, you know especially if they're you know big third quadrant fourth quadrant angles, um, the the algebra just gets annoying. But it it will if it is asking you to do it, you'll always be able to split up the angle. That's that's all I would say. So I would just keep trying. Okay, here's another flavor of problem, uh, which is verifying an identity. Let's recall the rules. So this is from 5.1 when we verified identities. Let's recall the rules. Um, you can't do both sides operations. You have to work with one until it looks like the other. And often these will have an X, right? So like if you were trying to use your previous knowledge of unit circle angles, well, you get stuck as soon as you land in that X. But what I notice is I have an X, but I also have a pi. So pi at least is a number, right? Remember, don't get too afraid of pi. That's just a number. Um, so how do I want to do this? Well, once I get over my fear of verifying identities, I notice that really this is just also of the form cosine of A minus B, alpha minus beta. So what identity do I want? It looks like I want to use identity number 2, uh, where alpha is pi and beta is x. 
So I'm going to, uh, just like when I'm verifying, right, I'll draw a little line. I say I'm not allowed to cross a line. I'm not doing both sides operations. I'm not adding cosine to both sides. I'm just using the identity. This is going to equal cosine of alpha, which is pi, times cosine of beta, which is x, right? And remember, the neg it's not negative x. The negative is built into the identity. So that's where, uh, so I'm not writing anything like negative x. So it's cosine pi, cosine x, plus, and that plus comes from the identity, sine pi, sine x. Okay, and you're like, where do I go from now? Well, cosine of pi is now broken out. We can evaluate it. Cosine of pi, cosine is the x-coordinate. So cosine of pi is negative 1, so we have negative 1. And sine pi is the y-coordinate. So sine pi is 0. So I have negative 1 cosine x plus 0 sine x. Well, guess what? That's equal to negative cosine x, which is what I was trying to show. So using the uh, sum and difference identity, or in this case the difference identity, it's usually pretty easy to verify that identity. Using the identity, you're actually done with this problem, but I want to talk about it for a little bit longer. Um, if this is cosine x, you know, I'm not going to scale it, the graph of cosine x, here's a graph of negative cosine x. in green. Well, what's cosine of pi minus x? That's the same as cosine of negative x plus pi, right? And just like switching the order, which is the same as cosine of negative paren x minus pi. And if you approach it this way, then it's first a horizontal reflection of cosine, which doesn't actually change it. And then it's a shift by pi units over. Well, what happens if I shift cosine? This would be at pi, by the way, the minimum of cosine. If I shift cosine by pi units over, oh my gosh, guys, it looks like negative cosine. So this identity actually proves that phase shifts create um, the same function. Um, I would not recommend verifying the identities graphically. That seems pretty dubious. I would use the sum and difference identity. It's just another interesting way to think about it is that that pi minus x is actually a phase shift. Okay, so you'll do a number of those and then you'll get to problems like this. Um, I've clipped out the directions, but usually they'll ask you to find a number of trig values, sine, cosine. Sometimes they even ask you to find tangent of a plus b. We're going to stick with sine and cosine today. Okay, so how do I want to do this? Well, I call these like angle clues problems. So I want to think about the two angles that I've been given. Uh, I've been told something about angle alpha, which is that its tangent is negative four thirds and the angle itself is in quadrant two. And I've been told something about angle beta which is that its cosine is positive two-thirds and beta is in quadrant one. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch out those two angles. And I'm going to do them separately. So we'll call this one alpha and this one beta. So it lies in quadrant two. So I'll draw on the right quadrant. I'm not worrying too much about scale. I'm going to create a reference triangle. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is four, adjacent is three. One of them should be negative. It looks like we're in quadrant two, so the three should be negative. I have to solve for the hypotenuse. Well, it's three squared plus four squared is 25. So this hypotenuse is five. That's a Pythagorean triple. Um, but you could also solve it with the Pythagorean theorem. And technically, right, this is angle alpha, but you can just think about the triangle. Beta is in quadrant one. Again, I'm not worrying too much about the scale. I'll drop a reference triangle. Here's beta. Beta is, we're given cosine, 2 over 3, so that's adjacent, 2, hypotenuse, 3. Okay, now I need to solve for the missing opposite side. How do I do that? It's the square root of 9 minus 4, Pythagorean theorem in reverse, which is going to be square root of 5. 
So I've solved for all the missing pieces. Why would I do that? Well, um, I'm going to go and think about the rest of the problem. Oh, calm down there. I've been asked to find sine of a plus b. To find sine of a plus b, I need to know uh, the identity sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. So I need to know the sine and cosine of all both of those angles a and b. And I'm going to need the same to do cosine of a plus b. I'm going to need to know cosine a cosine b and sine a sine b so that I can multiply and subtract them. So let's go back to angle a. Um, I was told that tangent of a is negative 4 thirds, but I now have a picture. So I can now write that cosine of a, I don't know why I did cosine first here, uh, would be negative 3 over 5, and sine of a would be 4 over 5, just from the picture. And so I'm able now to use those as substitutions in the identity. Cosine of b, same quadrant, that's... Uh, two-thirds, and so I actually didn't need the picture to know that. That was given to me, but the picture says the same thing. Sine of b, though, is going to be uh, opposite over hypotenuse root 5 over 3. So with these things set out, written out separately with my picture, I can now evaluate sine of a plus b and simplify. Uh, so the identity says sine of a plus b is sine a, four-fifths, cosine b times two-thirds, plus cosine a, negative three-fifths, times sine b, root five over three. How does this simplify? Uh, four times two is eight-fifteenths, minus three root five-fifteenths. So uh, nothing really simplifies out of that, so it looks like I'm going to have 8 minus 3 root 5 over 15. Uh, don't do anything silly like cancel the 3. Remember, if you're going to uh, cancel it, have to cancel out of every term here since there's a subtraction. So I would call that your final answer. Let's do the cosine of a plus b. So that's cosine of a, cosine of b, minus... Uh, sine of a, four-fifths, sine b, which is root 5 over 3. So how will that simplify? Well, it looks like here I'll have negative 6 fifteenths minus 4 root 5 fifteenths. So that could simplify to negative 6 minus 4 root 5 over 15. And my suspicion is you'd probably see in your book this written as negative 6 plus 4 root 5 all over 15. Your book just doesn't like to do that double leading negative uh, thing, so they'll factor it out to, to have a single negative. Um, and that's how you do stuff like cosine of a plus b when you're given some clues about the angles. Always pay attention, by the way, to the quadrant clues. Um, so you might be tempted to just look at the cosine, but sometimes you will need these quadrant clues because if uh, this had, for example, said quadrant 4, that would have affected the sine value. That would have changed the sine value to negative instead of positive. So you've got to use all the clues given to you. They probably won't give you unnecessary clues, but they will uh, give you all the information you need. This is my favorite problem from the whole section. And the reason is that it's a problem that has a really, really bad way to solve it. A way that's so bad that your book doesn't even usually do this your book has given you a warning about the wrong way to solve this problem so the wrong way would be to use the uh, all four of the identities for sine cosine cosine and sine with uh, subtraction and addition to create some big honking scary mess with I think it would end up being uh, 16 terms multiplied together uh, and then somehow to evaluate it please don't do that Instead, what I want you to recognize is that this has a particular structure. Notice how it has the structure of sine, cosine, plus
plus cosine sine. So if you go and look at the list of identities, let me bring one over here. What identity goes sine cosine plus cosine sine? Well, it appears that identity number three does that, sine cosine plus cosine sine. And inside of a sine function, everything inside the parentheses, even though here it's made up of multiple angles, this is also just an angle. I've already used alpha, so I'm going to call this angle x. And pi over 3 plus a, that's, we'll just call that angle y. That's just a different angle. Here I have pi over 3 minus a again. That's like angle x. And here I have pi over 3 plus a. That's like angle y. So I do actually have the exact same form as identity number 3. Do you guys see it? If you're not seeing it, just pause the video and kind of stare at this for, for long enough, and you will actually see that structure unveil itself. So this is really the same as that, which means the identity, we're going to do a little loopy-loo little here, which means by way of the identity, 74 is really equal to sine of x plus y. Let's plug in the x and y values, so that's sine of pi over 3 minus a plus pi over 3 plus a. That's the same as sine of 2 pi over 3. We know what 2 pi over 3 is, so we're here in that quadrant, so the sine is going to be positive square root of 3 over 2, consulting my unit circle. And that's how you solve a problem like this. Recognize the structure. Look, recognize that even something like pi over 3 minus a is really just another angle. And use the identity. And then things will, uh, the unknown alpha cancels out in this case. Um, so that's just a, a really cool thing to look for. I really like that problem because it feels like a trick. Uh, and it's not too hard of a trick, but it's a little trick. So that's the last example for today. Uh, you should be kind of set to go do your homework now. Um, but people always ask me year after year, hey, Mr. Eck, we've been talking about sine and cosine. What about tangent? What if tangent shows up? And I think it may, may show up on a couple of your homework problems. We try to avoid it. It's not very common. It's not very popular. We never need people to memorize the identity. I, I would, if we were in class normally, I would ha be having you memorize these identities one through four. I wouldn't have you memorize the tangent identity, but, you know, just in case, maybe you'd want to use it. Well, guess what? You already proved it. If you did the homework problems 5.1, you saw this problem number 43. And you may have wondered at that time, like, why would you bother to show that this thing is equal to that thing? In what world would that be good for? Well, let's take a look. At the, we worked, if we were working in class uh, in the last video, I know we did this, we worked with this side of the identity and simplified it to match the other side. But let's simplify this side a little bit more, shall we? I see I have a sine cosine plus cosine sine. So which identity goes sine cosine plus cosine sine? Oh look, it's identity number three. So the top of this thing could be replaced entirely with the expression sine of, I'm going to write it as x plus y instead of a and b, but same thing. Now let's look at the bottom of this identity. This one goes cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine. Which identity on this list goes cosine, cosine, minus sine, sine? Well, it's identity 1. Cosine of a plus b is equal to cosine cosine uh, cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So this is going to be the same as cosine of x plus y. Well, guess what? What's sine over cosine? Tangent. Oh my gosh. So, 
what we've actually proven and what, what we were working on and you, you solved on your own is the angle sum identity for tangent. If you have a tangent of x plus y, it turns into a fraction and you have tangent x plus tangent y over 1 minus tangent x times tangent y. And again, do you need to memorize that? No. Um, you could if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And if you want to investigate tangent of x minus y, well, think about that as tangent of x plus negative y. And also remember that tangent is odd. So the identity uh, that I'm, I'm just looking at the identity from earlier on the page would be tangent x plus tangent of negative y over 1 minus tangent x tangent negative y. But if tangent is odd, the negatives on the y's can be pulled out. And so then this would be equivalent to... I'm going to do bad practice and go up just to keep everything on the same page. Tan x minus tan y over 1 plus tan x tan y. So that would be the identity for tangent. Uh, how do I want to write that? Tangent of x minus y. And again, that's just proved using uh, the odd identity for tangent. So, you know, if you, if you want to know about tangent, there you go. All right, folks, um, this is a, a reasonably tricky section. Um, I'm not asking you this year at least to memorize the identities. Uh, that's if you're watching this in the spring of 2020. If you're watching this on any other year, you probably will have to memorize the identities. So uh, be prepared for that. But... Um, you know, as you're working and as you're practicing, I do actually promise that the identities get easier to remember and easier to work with the more you use them. So uh, just write them out every time. Be careful. Be meticulous. Show your work. Show your steps. Uh, email me with your questions. As always, I'm waiting here for you, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much.